Ah, I have access. Good evening. Uh, this is Dale Fye, and I'm your presenter this evening for the Denver Area Access Users Group. Tonight we'll be talking about the link table uh, manager for Access and SQL Server that I built uh, over the last year or so and uh, now have available for download on my website. Uh, as I said, I'm Dale Fye. I'm the owner of Dev Solutions LLC. Uh, I am an, I specialize in Microsoft Access uh, with SQL Server and and now Azure uh, databases, um, and that's my website. So, Link Table Manager, uh, why do we need a new one? Well, we apparently we don't need a new one anymore. Um, but for those of us that are still um, working in 2007, 10, 13. 16 and 19, um, we are still stuck with a link table manager that looks similar to what you see on your screen. Uh, the form is not sizable. You can't sort. Uh, you can't sort it other than by um, table name. Uh, you can't tell by looking at it what val what's valid and what isn't. And if you ever attempt to uh, select all and then refresh your links and you have more than one data source, um, you're in for a very long process. Um, we've, we've suffered through this for, well, this, this one for, gosh, I don't remember whether 2000 had the same one or not, but I know 2003 has this one. Um, so we've been suffering through this for almost 20 years. And Microsoft uh, finally, uh, came out, you know, listened to our requests and came out with a new one, um, which, by the way, is only open, only available to you if you're if you're running Office 365. Um, this, you know, this new one is pretty slick. It uses a tree view kind of structure, um, and that's kind of where I went, started out with on mine, and then I decided to go with uh, subforms instead. Um, but uh, the real issue is that we needed something that was much more efficient that would allow you to to see individual uh, data source information and the tables that are associated with each of those, select individual items to re refresh and do so. So about two years ago, before we knew when this was going this version was going to come out, I developed or started development of my own uh, link table manager. Now most of us um, most of us have code in our database applications that will relink tables um, so that we can just deploy the database and if the if the current link uh, links on those don't work, um, it will automatically pop up a dialog box and let you uh, select the the new data source and it will go back through and link all the tables, et cetera. Um, this is more of a developer tool. Um, not not so much for deploying applications, but in my case, I use it all the time when I want to switch back and forth between data sources. It works on all versions of Access from 2007 forward. It's super simple to install. Um, it looks for data sources uh, in all table of all tables, all linked tables, and pass through queries, um, which I don't know whether the uh, Office 365 one uh, version does or not. Um, it identifies unique data sources. It counts the tables in each one um, and or queries that are in, in those data sources. Um, it will assess whether or not those data sources are valid as soon as the application comes up. Um, it will um, display those sources in a subform, and then you can expand those and see the tables that are all, tables or queries that are all associated with those. Um, this is kind of what it looks like with a, uh, a file selected. Um, it, it has a column for you to select your data source. 
this particular application was uh, written for an oil and gas company that had uh, used a program called Field Direct, which you can kind of see here in the in the data source in the middle. And that data source had uh, like 10 different access databases uh, that contained various tables. Um, and I tossed in a couple of SQL Server uh, things as well in here to for this particular issue. So you can see right off uh, that these this data source that's highlighted as green was a valid data source. You can see how many tables are associated with that, uh, that data source. Um, you can see the file name that's associated with that. And um, you can tell whether or not the data source is access, a pass-through query, or a basically a SQL Server table, uh, a SQL Server database. And then once you check an item on the left-hand side there, my mouse went away. Once you check an item here on the left-hand side, the you'll see a list of all of the tables uh, associated with that checked item that are visible. The let me go back one page here real quick. So up here in the upper right hand corner, you've got an you have an options box or options button, which uh, provides you a number of different options. Um, the first one is uh, select the default action on a relink. Uh, you, you've got a couple of so you've got a couple of options there, but the one uh, that I'm displaying here is just prompt for source, which is basically uh, either refresh or link, relink or refresh. Um, you can you can select whether or not to resize the uh, let the program dynamically resize the column widths in the in those. Uh, in those data sheets um, to try and fit as much information as possible on the screen. Um, and it will collapse or expand the columns as necessary to do that. You can determine the minimum and maximum number of rows you'd want to display in the uh, in the subform at the top, which displays the data sheets and the subforms at the bottom. So if you've got a if you've got a narrow monitor or a or a, a wide wide format monitor, don't have a lot of height, you might want to minimize those number of rows. Um, or I'm running still on a rather uh, almost a square monitor, uh, the old style. And uh, so I have it set to quite a few rows to display when I'm displaying this. You can also select the default driver you want to use for SQL Server connections. Um, so I've got mine set at, at native client 10. I've got almost all of the current recent versions of uh, SQL Server drivers on my computer. So you can pick any one of those that you have. Um, and as long as that driver is available, it will use that. Otherwise, it will search through other drivers uh, that might be available as it tries to determine whether or not it can link to your SQL Server databases um, and identify a driver that is available uh, if you have one. Um, additionally, other options you can do, you can um, indicate whether you want to display the foreign name uh, of the table in the list at the bottom of the page. Um, you can uh, you can check for a local name uh, to, for a prompt for a local name. So if you're if you try to link a table that already exists. Um, Access by default will normally just app append a one to the end of that. Um, if you check prompt for name, it will ask you if you want to give it a name and it will display the default, which would be that table name with a numeric value behind it. Uh, otherwise, you can just uh, type into the, the input box the, the table name you want to give it. Um, and then it also gives you the ability to drop the schema name from SQL Server databases um, when you do the import. So like many of us, when you link to a SQL Server database, uh, if, you, if you don't manually change the, the local table name, it'll come in with, a D, with, in most cases, a DBO underscore prefix um, or whatever other schema you're using. Um, in this case, if you check that box, it'll drop whatever that schema is off the front and just leave you with the, the table name. So those are the options that are available in the app. Um, 
like I said, it's a really simple installation. Um, you download the file from my website. Um, the, the, the file has a uh, text file which gives you instructions and a uh, and the ACC uh, DB or ACCDA file, uh, which is a compile, which is an ACCDE renamed as it with an A. Um, all you do is copy that file into this folder on your computer. You open the file once. Um, it re it runs an auto execute macro uh, when it first opens and changes uh, the file path information that's in the usys reg info table. Um, you close the database, and the next time you open the access, you go to the database tools add-ins, click on the added manager, and select the LTM, and it and it's installed. It does not. It's, it uh, doesn't require administrative rights to do it, um, which is really important in a lot of environments. So that's a huge. That's that's a huge benefit to the way this is deployed. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little demo. If I can, uh, if I can bring that up, we will go ahead. All right, what I have here is a blank access database. I already have the tool installed, so I'm just going to go to database tools, add-ins, and run the link table manager. And this is what it looks like when you're when you don't have any tables already in the database. It it comes up blank. Um, yeah, while I'm looking at that, let me pull up my little notes here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add a new data source. Um, so I'm going to select an access database that's already in this uh, application. And once I've done that, I can select that database and see I can see all the tables that are in there. And for this example, I just want to import, I just want to link to uh, table applications. I click on that. You can see you get a little status bar. It shows you uh, how the update went or the link operation went, and then you get a note here. And if you click on that, you'll see the file down here. Uh, if you close and, and then open the nav pane again, you'll see that the application is linked. So that's how that's that's how simple that is. Um, one of the things you'll notice here is that there's a combo box here at the bottom of the page, which allows you to select uh, to display the tables that are linked from the selected access data source, or you can switch over and so, and identify all those that are uh, available in that data source. Um, so you can you can quickly and easily go back to that um, and and relink these others if you want to. Which is which is very useful. Uh, let's see here. I gotta drag this off my notes. Okay, so now what I want to do is um, I'm gonna bring in a SQL Server database. And the first thing it does when you do this is it, it searches your local network for any um, servers that you have uh, identified. And I've got, I've got two identified here locally. So it'll search those, it'll pick the first one, and then it will automatically populate the dropdown with the list of the databases that are in that, uh, that first one. You can pick any one of those. Um, I'm gonna just gonna pick. Let's try WinHost. And and at this point, you can. Uh, I said you, this is the default driver that's available. I've got a bunch of others listed here. Um, some of which I have, some of which I don't have installed. Um, so if you select a driver and then select test, and and you don't have that driver, it's going to give you an error message say it's invalid connection. But if you click alternates, it will it, it, that tells it to look for alternates. And now if I click on test, it it tells me that it, it adjusted my driver and it went from it went from the 17.2 down to 17. And and then it it automatically enables the continue button. And 
it also gives me an option to save my connection, this connection, in case I want to go back and and pull stuff up uh, from this data source in the future. Again, like I said, it's a developer tool. I use it on my local computer, so I have, you know, I've got like 15 clients. Um, so this really saves me a lot of time being able to pull these connections back up from within the application. Um, so if I continue, it's going to ask me for a title uh, that, because I told it I wanted to save it, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to demo. Save it, and now it's it's created that driver. If I come back up here, it's going to ask me to validate uh, my connection. In this case, I'm just going to use Windows Integrated, and it automatically, because I don't have any tables linked to that yet, it automatically gives me um, changes this selection from from linked to available and shows me the tables that are there. In this case, I'm gonna to try to link table applications again. Um, I've already got an access version of that and I'm gonna to try to link that table now. And again, like I said, it's, I told it that I wanted it to prompt me for a name. It's, just give, it's giving me the default and I'm just gonna go ahead and use that for now. So, Got that. So now I have both those data sources in there. If I delete this one again, and restart the app, it gives me that information again. But now what I wanna do, instead of, of just linking a new data source, I want to update this link and you can assume that you're working in a maybe you're working on a local with a local access backend and now you want to switch over to a SQL server backend. So you know you select all um, you indicate that you instead of wanting a data source of access you pick up pick the ODBC uh, SQL relink and I'm just going to tell it I want my WinHost database. And I'm gonna test that. And next, it relinked my operation. It says it's complete. You'll note now that my data source is my Win, my, my WinHost uh, server. This is the database that it's on. And if I, if I, redo the nav pane, you'll see that the the application icon or the object icon changes from a linked access table to a linked SQL server table and you can see the uh, you can see the connection string there by mousing over it. Let me see here. I'm trying to get the go to meeting window to stop covering things up over here in my all right um well that's that really you know is is the gist of the the tool um it one of the things that i i asked one another one of the mvps tonight um, because I, I I only have one client that's using Office 365, and I had not tested this, but you know the fact that you can you can go from from access to uh, from SQL Server and back again is not a feature that it's available in the new Office 365 uh, Link Table Manager. So that's another one of the advantages of, of using this version of the uh, of the LTM. Uh, now let me go back to my notes here. If I can get that to come up. We'll jump through these real quickly. 
Okay, changes that I'm about uh, that I'm changes that I'm working on in the application. Um, I have one of the Access MVPs decided to test it, um, and he's he has probably apparently 20 or 30 SQL Server uh, SQL servers running on his network. And that process, when you first load the application, um, or the, when you first load the part of the application that, uh, well, actually it's two parts. When you first load the application, the first thing it does is analyze all your local tables to determine what data sources you have. If that database has lots of data sources, it will go out and attempt to connect to each of those data sources um, to validate whether or not it's a, val it's a valid connection or not. So in his case, he had like 20 different data sources and they were taken, it took him forever for that process to resolve. That's also happens when you open up the, when you click on a new request, a new open a new data source and that combo box that lists the local servers that are available, it takes a while for it to go through and, and assess all of those servers as well. So one of the things he recommended was that I consider making that an option as well so that it doesn't necessarily, necessarily validate each of those uh, data sources when the application first opens, um, but would instead validate it if you like right clicked on that record and, and selected a, uh, a validate option or something along along those lines, um, which is what the next bullet talks about. Um, also need a also need a feature that allows me to refresh the list of tables in a, in a data source um, without having to close the application and bring it back up again. Uh, although that runs very quickly, uh, that would just be a nice little feature to have in there as well. Uh, when I built the app, I I, I had been using temp vars for quite a while and I just automatically used those. Uh, but over the last year or so, I've managed to inherit a couple of um, Access 2003 databases that I'm doing maintenance on, uh, maintenance on. And I find that I would really like to be able to use this tool in 2003. So I'm in the process of removing all of the references to temp vars and, and using uh, and using a, a, a hidden form to store all those variables and um, so that I can I can uh, kick it back one level and make it available for Access 2003 as well. Um, and then, you know, the only reason I haven't expanded it to other data sources is that I don't currently have any other um, enterprise-like databases um, running that I have access to, so I haven't uh, played around with that at all. Does anybody have any questions? Hello, I can't hear anybody. The silence is deafening. That's pretty awesome. I like it. So it's easy to, I mean, it's easy to get to. Um, like I said, the, let me go back to that. Um, it's on my website. Uh, www.dev-solution.com, soln.com. Um, it's there as long as well as my access shortcut tool is also available there for download. Um, you will see, um, let me go back to the tool here real quick. Um, about uh, here under the help, there is a help feature which basically lists. Uh, I've, I've categorized the various a bunch of different areas within the database and 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 made a uh, categorize them in this document, um, or you can do a report that that looks at all of those and you can print the report out if you'd like. Um, there's a a donate option uh, available. Uh, if you're interested, if you like it and use it, uh, I'd appreciate your donations. Um, there's a check for updates option, which allows you to look and see if there's a latest, uh, a newer version. Um, the one that's out there right now is actually five, uh, 1.15.10. Uh, this, this version, I intend to publish this version, which just has a couple of minor tweaks in it. Um, nothing significant, but uh, 
couple of things that I, I thought were a little bit annoying when I use it so much as I do. So I've, I've tweaked it a little bit and hope to post this out there in the next day or so. Uh, there's a register option, which allows you to register on the website that, that you have the database, um, in which I'll, you can also indicate whether or not you want to receive um, receive emails from me when there are changes. Um, and then there's the basic about uh, item as well. So, so does anybody, George, have you used it at all? Uh, to be honest, I used it once, and then I retired. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, um, seriously, I think I use it once or twice. I've tried out a couple others. That's <laughs> one that I've used as well. Um, but I'm seriously not really doing that much <laughs> consistently. Yeah, Joe, Joe Anderson, um, one of the MVPs from Southern California, um, did a lot of testing for me and, uh, you know, provided a lot of feedback as we went along. Um, and I know there's a few other, a few of the other MVPs that are using it. I think uh, Jim Detman's using it. Um, but uh, I encourage I encourage you to take a look, you know, download it, take a look at it. There, there will, about every 20, about every 20 times you launch the application, you'll get a little annoy, annoying reminder that says, hey, this is, uh, you know, uh, we appreciate your use of the application and, and, and would appreciate your donation if you haven't already done so. Um, you, can, you can select to ignore that or you can select to donate from that. Uh, it, happen, it pops up about every 20 or 25 uh, times that the application runs. So it, it doesn't annoy you too much. Any other questions? All right, Jim. Well, it looks like, <clears throat> excuse me. Hey, it looks like Jim is um, asking about a uh, multi-database scenario and seems like they've lost their uh, their microphone. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, we talking about data from two different uh, databases, you mean? Actually, Actually, that's a great that's a great idea. I hadn't thought about that. Um, so let's pick another database. Um, actually, I can't go online to my client. Uh, find one here. Uh, I was just trying to find one. Let's go back here. Okay, this is just this is a, this is my play database where I go to just where I just go to test things. So it's probably got a you know it's got 130 different tables in it. And one of the things that I didn't mention is that that once you, um, if you pull these tables in, now let's let's just um, let's go back out to let's close this. Go back out over to look for my. There we go. Uh, here, here, access, and we'll just change that to rename. Change that to DB1 demo. Launch this. Okay. There's a good example, the fact that DB1 no longer exists, that data source no longer exists. So um, the path there is highlighted in red to indicate that that is not a valid path. So from there, I can I can select all these. 
or I could just go and uh, go ahead and select all of these, um, both, all of those tables above, and indicate that I want to relink those. And when I do that, it's going to call back. Come, it's going to loop through the list of of uh, data sources that have been selected, ask me to identify the replacement for that table for that data source. In this case, I want DB1 demo. And it's going to link, it's going to loop through all of those, and then it's going to come back and ask me for the replacement file that I want to link to for source file, the source file. And in that case, that's the same, I'm going to use the same one. And it does that. So you, it, it loops through those that you've selected. So if you have multiple databases selected, it'll, it'll loop through them. And that includes if you have a SQL Server database selected, it, it will, uh, it will go, loop through that as well. You know, the reason I, I love this because working with SQL Server data backends or, or Azure backends is just so much easier this way. Um, I can move back and forth between a client's production data and their and their my, my testing data uh, so much easier with this than uh, I can otherwise. And it makes a huge difference in, in the amount of time I waste with that doing those type of operations. SQL views are considered, as far as uh, SQL, I'm, I'm looking down here, Jim indicated, uh, what about SQL views? Um, SQL views are uh, included. Um, they show up in the, in, in the bottom of the, uh, down here at the bottom uh, of the database when I click on available. Uh, they show up just like tables, although they, they're there. And Pat, and, uh, I guess I didn't use, I didn't give you a data source that had pass-through queries either. Um, let me think if I can find a data source that has a pass-through query in it. Um, uh, let's see here. All these good ideas. I need to add them to my demonstration here. Pass through query. Hmm. Most of those are on my VMs. I can't. I can't do that right now. Um, I'm going to have to spend some time doing that. But, um, but it also the, that's the other thing that I don't think that the Office 365 Link Table Manager does is I don't think it identifies uh, data sources that are in pass through queries. What what will happen is down here in this data source you'll see. Uh, PT, uh, PTQ or PT query uh, show up and you'll see, if you select that, you'll see all of those pass-through queries that are down there. And you can do the same, you can update those data source, those backend data sources just like you can the other. So uh, you don't have to worry about doing that within your code at some point. Let's see. Jim, your point about um, the SQL Server views and the indexes, no, it does not relink uh, or reestablish the indices on views. Um, that that needs to be one of the things I add to my uh, my to do list. Okay, actually, that was Dawn. That wasn't Jim. Hey, Dale, I got a question. This is Ken. Sure, Ken. Hey, um, you were talking about, as you mentioned, uh, views and pass-through queries. What about stored procedures? No, I don't, I, I don't do, uh, I don't do anything with stored procedures, but, but I generally call my stored procedures as part of a pass-through query. So if you're, you know, if you're running a, uh, if you're running a, a stored procedure, I usually just do make that's just an executable for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a execute and the pass through query or the store procedure name and whatever parameters. Um, and then I just, you know, in my pass through query, I indicate whether it's a returns records or, a, uh, or not. Oh, right. Um, so, right. So it, so it will do those, 
it will do the rec update the record source or the or the uh, connection string on pass through queries. Okay. Okay. I think that answered my question. I probably a asked it all wrong, but um, thank you. Yeah. Sure. Let's see. I'm looking to see if there's any other questions. Oh, all of the Denver folks lost their their microphone. Okay. Well, I mean, unless anybody has any other questions, uh, that concludes my portion of the discussion. Okay, Jim. What do you want us to do? I, I see since I'm a member of the uh, group, they probably want me to do something and I have no idea. Because <laughs> I'm in liquid. All right. Ah, okay, Jim says thank, uh, no, actually George, George says thanks. You probably saw that one though. Mm-hmm. Well, this is fun. There we go. So I will make uh, yeah, this. Ah, I can hear somebody. Hey, we're uh, back. Everybody. We're back. <laughs> Where'd y'all go? We, don't we were Bronco watching the Bronco game. It was dark. <laughs> <laughs> the Broncos scored. They had to take a break. I'm sorry. What was that again? Sorry to interrupt you, Dale. So you were you were saying? Oh, I was saying I'm I'm uh, I'm done with my presentation. If uh, unless anybody else has other questions. Well, Ed, 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 that was excellent. Thank you, Dale. I noticed that. Um, so it sounds like if you could if you could kind of recapitulate the scenarios where your tool does some things that the Office 360 or the Access 365 one still does not. What were those again? Um, it allows you to switch data sources for a table from an Access to SQL Server and back again. Got it. Um, and it also and it also uh, updates. Uh, the um, connection strings on pass-through queries. Okay. And, and your tool will, will run in Access Office 365, right? It just, it's it, just. Uh... It will, correct, it will. Okay, okay. I mean, the in the one instance, in the one, for the one client I do have, I have tested it there and it, it does run. I, that's all I have. Excellent. Any other questions from the uh, from the rabble? What's the score? <laughs> Ten to six. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin should know that. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin will know. Yeah, they're uh, about to go in and make it seventeen though. Although Mahomes is down on the field, and they call the timeout. So. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well thank, you, thank you very much, Dale. Uh, we, we can stay online and chat for a while, but I wanted to, you know, bring the presentation to a formal end, and, and thank you very much for your presentation today.